Don't pick your skin, pick bandage. Hey my loves, welcome back to the Acne channel. It's your girl Liz, aka Pretty Progress 23. Today's video is all about all the things that I wish I knew before getting acne. I had acne for the longest time, like I had teenage pimples since I was 12, started getting hormonal fluctuations, so my pimples started coming and going, and then I took antibiotics, and then fast forward, I had cystic acne up into my adult years, so when I was like 21, 22, it was really, really inflamed across my cheeks, across my forehead, and it just went down from there, like it was getting worse and worse and worse. So 10 years or so, I had acne for the longest time, and I have learned quite a few things along the way, and I wanted to share them with you so hopefully this video encourages you to know that healing can happen and so let's get right into it number one acne is not your worst enemy I know that sounds really hard because when I was looking at myself in the mirror I would just break down and cry when I saw the bumps the mountains across my cheeks and was throbbing in pain but honestly don't see it that way acne is your body's way of telling you that something is wrong it's your body's way of saying i need help and i'm encouraging you to reflect on what's going on in your life that's causing that inflammation your body is so incredibly powerful and it's just your body's way of saying look i'm looking out for you and i'm showing you a visible symptom so you can do something about it so by reframing your perspective instead of saying why is this happening to me and feeling super frustrated instead say what is this lesson teaching me how can I learn more about my body so I can take back and reclaim that power because if you feel like this is out of your control you're gonna settle and you're gonna feel really upset and helpless and that's exactly what I don't want for you so remember acne is not your worst enemy Two, less is more. Okay, so this one is also a big one. So when I was battling chronic acne, I remember rushing to the chemist and my local, you know, drugstore and basically grabbing all the different high-end products as well as products that people said that was gonna work. So even the simple kind of basic products that was really raved about and my cart just kept getting longer and longer. And this wasn't just in store, but also online. Like I'll be surfing the internet for the next remedy, for the next miracle. I'll have a blanket over my head, just typing away and adding these things to my cart and it literally killed my bank and it was frustrating when I didn't even have money to buy these products and the more products you use the more overwhelming it is for your skin your skin can only handle so much because once you're packing on these acids or these you know these moisturizers and these oils and stuff like that it could ruin your skin barrier and skin barrier is so important once it's ruined the good ingredients are not gonna work so always start with a very simple routine see how it goes and then start reintroducing more now Number three is don't make acne your life's obsession because I know that I spend a lot of time on the internet, a lot of time looking at myself in the mirror, a lot of time just thinking about what I could do. And I guess it kind of stripped me from any form of happiness. Uh, I'll talk about this later on the, on the point of happiness. But because I kept obsessing about it, I started losing focus on other things in my life. I didn't care about what my family was doing. I didn't care about what my friends were up to. I didn't care much about my studies either. And so it acne took over my life and I felt like it was controlling me and dictating me. So definitely try your hardest not to make an obsession. Limit your time when you're looking in the mirror. It really allows you to get back on track with life for happiness. Hi mom, hi dad. Hello, Going away for you. Bye, you don't know you. Number five, don't put your life on hold until you get clear skin. I've heard this. It was not a good idea to be filming downstairs. Number five, don't put your life on hold until you have clear skin. I've heard this phrase over and over again. I told myself, I'll be happier when I have clear skin. I'll be happier when I'm skinnier. I'll be happier when I'm richer. And all those things actually deprived me of happiness and I was not living my life. Because if you're waiting for that sense of happiness, then your body is literally saying, okay, the reason why you're looking for happiness in the first place is because you aren't happy. And so you're gonna be miserable, you're gonna be sad. So it's a complete sham, the idea that the goal is to be happy. The goal is to be focusing on your life, doing what makes you happy without consciously 
striving for it because it's going to put a lot of weight and stress on yourself. Number six, there's no one miracle product that is going to magically clear your skin overnight or even say five days. So a five day detox cleanse, we all want to believe that, but it's more beneficial for you if you try to nourish your mind, your body and your soul all together. On the same note, antibiotics, birth control pills, Broacatane, I understand their place in some people's healing journey, but often these quick fixes, often not the best remedy because they are short-lived results and they do more damage than good. If you guys wanna hear more about my thoughts on antibiotics, birth control, and robacatine, please look through my videos so you can make a more informed decision for you. Number seven, stop comparing yourself to other people. I know it feels like it's ingrained in us to compare ourselves to our friend's skin, to the people on social media. And I know it's so addicting, but it just depletes your self-esteem. And you gotta understand that everybody's skin is different while she may not have acne she might have other underlying problems or health issues that you don't know about while he has clear skin maybe he has you know family issues at home nobody has perfect lives and the more we pick and choose on what we want to compare ourselves to the more it's depleting for us so one way to go about it is going onto your following list on Instagram or whatever social media you're on try to unfollow the people who promote these false ideals of perfection or more so unfollow people who make you feel bad. It's no hate to them. It's you taking control and making the right decision for your mental health. Now, realistically speaking, if you can't stop comparing yourself to other people, then try to rewire your brain where that form of jealousy is more so an inspiration. And I started comparing myself to this girl on Instagram. She had a clear skin. She was living a life where she was super healthy. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, she has such clear skin. She's so lucky. I changed the narrative and I said, you know what? She's not lucky. She took control of her life because she's eating healthy. And I personally know that my food trigger is, you know, dairy, excessive meat. And so she inspired me instead of making me envious. She inspired me to pick up better habits. So by reframing the way you see things, it might help you in that aspect. But if you can't turn your jealousy into like a form of, you know, inspiration, then just try to stop comparing yourself to another person altogether. So when your brain hears yourself saying insulting, self-criticizing kind of remarks about yourself, you need to stop it in its tracks and form better habits. Number eight, this one is very, very close to my heart and that is, I wish I knew I was worthy of love because during my acne stages, I was so, so broken and I just thought to myself, if I have acne, no one's gonna love me. If I have acne, no one's gonna look at me and hold me and kiss me. When I was in my last relationship, I had pretty clear skin and then three months hit, the relationship was getting serious and I had full blown cystic acne. There were so many times I was just rolling up into a ball and crying myself to sleep because I was like, he, he's gonna be so disgusted when he looks at my face without makeup. He can already tell that there's bumps in my skin. Like I might as well just break up with him and save the heartbreak and save myself from burdening him with these skin issues, save myself from the embarrassment. I just felt unworthy for such a long time. But let me tell you, you are worth all the love in the freaking world. It's what's on the inside that matters most. And I know it sounds cliche and it's really hard to apply to your life sometimes when you're at your lowest point, but please remind yourself that it's what you bring on the table. It's your smile, your quirky traits. It's the way you light up the room. It's the way you care for others. All these qualities make up you as a person and it's not your acne that defines you. Number nine is please have patience. Patience is literally a virtue. There are so many times where I tried skincare products and it didn't work because it was only five days. It didn't work because it was only two weeks. Also have patience when you are doing lifestyle changes. You know, when you're cutting out dairy, or you're cutting out excessive meat, take time in having a food diary, take time into really journaling and seeing if it does make a difference. If you give up too easily, you might be missing out on, you know, something that could really contribute to your healing journey. And my last step is never be too hard on yourself when you make a mistake. So let's say you're a skin picker. I was a skin picker for the longest time and I'll sit in front of the mirror just squeezing and popping my skin and a few weeks later I noticed that I had an indentation. I had heaps of habit pigmentation and I beat myself up for it. I blamed myself and I just felt so horrible over and over again. And when that turns as a pattern, when you're picking at your skin and then you blame yourself and then you say nasty things about yourself, you start to believe it and it will affect you 
in all aspects of your life. It will affect your confidence in your studies. It will affect your confidence in relationships. It will affect your confidence at work. So make sure that the dialogue is positive and just don't be too hard on yourself when you make a mistake. Say that you're gonna do better. Be committed to this long-term commitment to yourself because your body is worth it and it's capable of healing. So those are the 10 top things that I wish I knew and I still today apply it to my life whenever I have a breakout from stress or whatever's going in my life because at the end of the day, this is your body, it's your temple. You need to nurture it and you are worthy of healing. So I hope this video is helpful and I hope you guys have a lovely day. Big kisses. Bye guys.